it's a western, but at the same time, we could say it's a action adventure. I've never made a film that is uh, quite such an audience pleaser. You know, I mean, it's it's such a it's it's kind of a David and Goliath story. Maybe that's what, how I would describe it. It because it's a story about people who are outlaws, lost souls who become heroes by putting their lives in service of others, you know? And that makes it sound kind of important or deep or profound or something, but it's in the guise of something absolutely hysterical and fun and mm. raucous. He used to be a soldier and a sharpshooter, but um, one of the most famous uh, shooter, but he he has a really uh, big uh, trauma uh, all of a sudden, so um, he's fighting himself inside. But he doesn't want to express that. He doesn't want to say to somebody. But uh, Billy knows that, and uh, he tried to be strong in front of people, in front of other uh, outlaws. But Billy only know what what's his problem. And um, he's very uh, vulnerable, but at the same time, he's very strong and um, strong fighter and sharp fighter. And I think the the cement of their friendship, you know, is that where is that Billy is this man he's met who's incredibly calm, incredibly centered, and incredibly confident, and and they they have different strengths, you know. Good night is kind of a you know, you call a BS artist, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, but he relies on Billy's centeredness and quiet confidence. They have, they can help each other, you know, and their, their friendship is one of, they can watch each other's backs. And you get the, I always got the sense that while in some ways Goodnight was protecting Billy, Billy was also protecting Goodnight. And they had their, you know, that was a symbiotic friendship that way. When I was trying to find this character and everything, I was I watched all Ken Burns' documentary about the Civil War and I came across this thing, you know, Conley's sharpshooters. That there, what there was a and it's a great a great story about a one of the Louisiana Tigers, you know, this band of guys that was a guy who would actually go out and and kill Union commanders. That was his job. He would shoot, you know, he would find his way forward in the battlefield and, and kill the leaders and that was and he would get these unbelievable shots and stuff and so I had this idea that that was kind of who he was and like a lot of you know the sharpshooter in history they often suffer tremendously you know because they know who they're shooting you know it's not anonymous the way sometimes battles are you 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 know who you killed you hear later who you killed you know you hear from their family they're haunted by it. I mean even in the Afghanistan war you you that's very common when you, even now that you know with the scope and you really see the person it's an impact on the soul and and I thought it would be a very interesting character inside an action movie to have somebody kind of struggling with the demon of of death and and killing and when is what is a just what is a just war what is a just kill what is does does such a thing exist he's haunted by it The obvious thing are clothes and things like that, but BH and I were always bringing ideas. Some of them he liked, some of them he didn't. We had lots of we had lots of ideas that didn't make it. You know, yeah, you were a factory of idea. Yeah, <laughs> and that was you know Antoine's job is you know to kind of make sense that all seven of us coming at him with different ideas about how to make the movie stronger. Right before we shoot that uh, scene, uh, I asked Antoine, "What if I um, use a hairpin in, in, the, on, 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 uh, in that hat?" Actually, originally it was a knife. And Antoine says, "I like that. I love it. Let's let's do it." So we made the uh, hairpin inside the hat. So that's that's how it changed.
anybody who's seen Bittersweet Life, you know, and some of uh, Bing Hao's other work, he's done a lot of martial arts stuff, and that stuff, he, he, you know, your grace, your natural grace oh, is, is uh, uncomparable. We usually uh, gather at the bar. You remember the bar mm -hmm. and on set? We gather in the bar, and I love the, those times when Ethan playing piano, sing a song. That's the most, one of the most relaxing times. We had a lot of, unlike most movies where everybody's called at certain times, because we were all always around. Even if you're not in the scene, you're in the background of a scene, or they weren't sure what scene they were going to shoot that day, so you had to be called. And we were all hanging out. It was a lot of, a lot of testosterone and a lot of horseback riding and a lot of gun, you know, a lot of machismo. Hilly had probably in a lot of ways the most challenging role in the film because first of all, the Seven Samurai doesn't have that character and the original Mike Seven doesn't have that character. And, um, and she was surrounded by a ton of testosterone um, and she had to find her own you know, she's not a horseback rider and she had to teach her. I mean, she, it was challenging. And she handled it all with grace and humor and um, a kind of no-nonsense attitude that was really compelling. He's got special aura and charisma. When he first came up to the set, it, you know, he could he never says something, but he already controlling everything. That was an amazing moment for me. He has a powerful energy about him. You know, it's different. It's makes him. It's what makes him such a great actor. You know, the power of his imagination, and you know, pe people think acting is about line reading or something like that. It's it's a whole other. There's some something else happening when it's done at a high level. And he's the reason to make the movie. You know, seeing seeing Denzel take the helm of, you know, such a kind of the American iconography of, of the Hollywood Western, you know. Did you know that Dwayne Johnson was Tim Burton's second choice for the role of Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which went to Johnny Depp? Do they seriously look alike according to Burton? Who do you prefer as an actor, Depp or The Rock? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to click here for more videos. Thanks for watching.